Perhaps this might be something. Goodness. Here we are, Quercus. What do you mean, Quercus? Of course I'm prepared. I have my noble steed below me, and my trusted she- His whiskers crack into a mischievous smile. And I may have cracked the spell that will stop the great acorn in its furious tracks, if that's what you mean. That's right, Quercus. We've done it! Sir Laura turns to you his beady eyes shining with pride. I owe you an apology, S.H.I.E.L.D. At the start of our journey, I wouldn't have believed a human would lead me to the discovery. But I see now that my prejudice was foolish. Without you, Quercus and I might still be stuck on that abominable prison island. Now, here I am. Indeed, Sir Laura. You feel it, don't you? It's so still. But the great acorn is nearly here. We've known this moment would come. I am ready. Quercus is ready. And you, Shield? Sir Laura nods in return and grabs your pinky with his tiny... No matter what happens next, Shield, it has been an honor. Now... Come here often. I don't know what you did, but you just released a source blood. I thought I'd come and see what all the fuss was about. Should have known. Looks like the big moment has finally arrived. I will do everything I can to support you, Godwoken. I will pray for you. I don't underestimate the power of true prayer. This is a place of incredible power where a single prayer holds the weight of thousands. Consider it a taste of your divine future. The people will pray for you. In turn, they'll trust you to do right by them. Of course, it's up to you whether or not to listen. I know how I'd respond, but you do you. Malady wearily chuckles to herself, then bows her head in a show of unexpected but sincere reverence. Looks like my investments paid off after all. You've shown me kindness in the face of my sins. I've always preferred to be the one reaping the attention, but you've turned the tables. I suppose it's only right, seeing as how a new divinity may stand before. Now go. Rivalon needs a new divine.
If I am, God Morgan. Dallas said you would come, old friend. You were always hard as diamonds, and twice as bright. Your divine welcomes you. The traitor himself, the divine you once selflessly served, the one you thought dead, lords over the chamber from a granite throne. He moves to speak, but it's Riedemann's voice that next pierces the air. What a twist. Lucian frowns at Riedemann, then turns to the silent monk standing near and smiles widely. Reality sets in. The monk is Gareth. No longer seeker, but slave. Oh, Gareth. He was always so devoted and so stubborn. In this form, his faith won't falter. The ideal servant. I underestimated you, Godwoken. You have proven to be a formidable foe. You have my respect. Respect? Indeed. Lucian's gaze rests upon you and goes through you. He takes your measure entirely. Lucian, we should tell him the truth. Yes, I agree. It is time we dropped our masks. Dallas nods. Then, reaches for the sides of her head. Where there was one face, suddenly there are four. She takes off the mask of the shapeshifter. A skull is revealed, bejeweled and ancient as the void. I am eternal. Aren't they just full of surprises? Fear not, old friend. Dallas is on the side of all that is good. She is helping me rid Rivalon of the influence of the Source. Listen to her. I shall tell you the tale as I told it to Lucian. Long ago, the Scholar Fane discovered that the veil between the world and the Void was made of Source. Our seven lords desired this power. Of course. Silence, slave. Our king forbade the Seven to reach for this power, but they didn't listen. Instead, they rebelled and sent the king and his people into the void. With the source they stole from the Veil, the Seven created the races so they would have worshippers. The Seven made a mistake. By taking its source, they tore a hole in the Veil, and it is through this hole that the Void finds its way into our world. The Seven's lust for power let in the Void. Our goal is to close the hole they created, to restore the Source to the Veil. When we are done, there shall be no more Source in the world. Rivalon will be finally free from the gods that enslave them. My people cannot be allowed to return from the Void. They are tarnished. They are void woken. They can only bring chaos and death and. There is more, but she hesitates to share it. Then she decides that she must. I was a child when the God King tore my family apart. I was purged of source and left to rot in a putrid tomb. A child. It was hell. A hell I suffered for the sins of my father. He was the one that betrayed the God King. He was the one that told the Seven the secrets of the Vale. The cruel joke of it all is that the same tomb that housed my tortured body is what sheltered me from the Void. Fe my father, the scholar Fane. But now I finally have revenge. Revenge on the Seven and the God King. Revenge for what they took from me. My life. My people! My mother! The hammer's voice falters and her coolness vanishes. Every crack and rasp betrays her grief. But her next words burn not with sadness, but anger. He never even looked for me. He never even looked for her! Dallas, control yourself. Our purpose transcends your personal wounds. Yes. You. 
Dallas's reasons weren't mine to question. All that ever mattered to me was peace. Peace for Riverlong. Peace for me, whatever the means. And now, we are on the... She sacrificed herself for the betterment of Rivalon. She didn't do it willingly, mind you. Curiosity led her to the tomb. My hunger for source took care of the rest. I presume her bones remain there. And then I took up lace. Face rippers are such marvels, aren't they? It didn't take long to realize that Lucian was the key to my vengeance, and I was the key to the salvation of Rivalon. While Dallas sought the Aetiran, I started draining the gods of their source. Slurp, slurp, slurp. One more word from you, and I shall use the leash. I had to hide from the gods. So I had the walls of this crypt equipped with tenebrium and protections put in place. It worked. Everyone, even the gods, thought me dead. As divine, I was created, empowered to stop the void. I was the avatar of the Seven, their strength and their weakness. My bond to them allowed me to drain them of their source. Yes, in a sense. When the Death Fog was unleashed, many elves died. With fewer elves to worship him, Tyr Dilius weakened. This gave the God King his first real foothold back in the world. To strengthen himself, he sent his Void Woken, the remnants of my people, to hunt down the sorcerers seeking to reclaim their source. The Void Woken? Disgusting things. They ravaged the land they touched and infected the air they breathed. They were also an incredible stroke of luck. You see, blaming the sorcerers for Voidwoken made them easier to capture. The Aterra now contains almost all of the source the Seven stole. Soon we will be able to heal the Vale. The Void shall be banished, and I, Lucian the Divine, shall return from the dead. A false Divine, of course. I shall have no power. But the world will not know this. I shall demand peace, and we shall have it. The plan is almost complete. We have made so many sacrifices, Ifan. All of us. Of ourselves and those we love. One last sacrifice is required. For the future of Revalon, you must surrender your source. Decide. Be the true hero and give up your source, or be forced to submit. Like a coward. Like a slave. There is no other way. The source of the world is required to close the veil. All of the source. We only lack yours. As I say, one last sacrifice is required. Yours. Good. You understand. The world shall not know this. I shall return from the grave. We already had more than enough Godwoken. Another sacrifice I was forced to make. Maggot, I am no slave. I am Bracchus Rex. I am the Source King. With a flick of her wrist, Dallas sends a jolt through Bracchus's body. He writhes in pain. Don't worry. He's well under control. He's made a fine servant. Isn't that right? 
ingrate. I used him to find the Etiran. When we're done, I'll release him from his duty and free him from his pain. Until then... Dallas punctuates her statement with another wrist flip. Bracus shudders, but his lips remain curled in a self-satisfied grimace. Evil? Yes, I suppose he is. I imagine you think the same of me. Go on. Cool. Then let us proceed. Show some responsibility. Surrender your source. You'll be a hero. Everyone will know of the sacrifice you'll make. Your name will be synonymous with the survival of Rivalon. Lucian's right. We can save the world from the void. We should make the sacrifice. Good. Yes, very good. She raises what looks like a leash. A chuckle emerges from beneath Vredemann's hood. The chuckle becomes a guffaw, booming and hateful. Dallas flicks her wrist, and nothing happens. <laughs> oh, Dallas. Sweet, simple Dallas. How? What? The leash is cut! A bright observation from a bilious imbecile. You know people often become sloppy when they're close to achieving their dream. You left the leashing wand next to me, you stupid maggot. So accustomed had you become to me, pretending to be your sl- Kill him! Do shut up, you tedious buffoon. And don't look so surprised. As if I would allow a bone bag to enslave me. <laughs> me! Yes, I am the one true king of the source. He who shall be god of the source. It is time for my divinity! Or did you really think I'd play slavishly along with your ridiculous scheme, Dallas? Yes, I played my part of the servile stooge. But know this, it was only about the power of divinity. Kill him now! Too late, you moldering blight-stained pigs. Grant me power, my ally! God King, I call on you! You would interrupt Bracchus Rex. You would interrupt the Source King. my call. Come to the Source King!
The Source King of Legends lies dead once more, perhaps even for good. Dallas, badly weakened, looks to you. And the air goes suddenly, eerily still. Then breaks, a flash of heat hitting your face like fire. I hate to crash the party, but I think the time's come for an intervention. There's a matter I need to attend to. Dallas whips her head in the doctor's direction as he calmly raises his palm. What is the meaning of... Enough talk for you. Dallas collapses. There is neither fanfare nor dirge. The hammer is simply gone, victim to the doctor's cruel whim. And... The doctor turns to you after the late divine falls, lifts a blood vial, and taps it to make a dull clink. A chilling reminder of the pact you made. Amazing! What forces I command with the power of our pact, yes? I've come to collect, Ifa. I presume you intend to honor our agreement. Then you shall rise. As I descend, the future has come. Now, let's swat away these useless gnats.
so it is done. You, the god of light. I, the god of dark. Balance. And so it ended. A tale that began with my own ill-fated attempt to rid the world of the God Woken. A new divine rose. A true heir to the Seven. More powerful than ever. And united Rivalon in its battle against the Void. All across the realm he was worshipped and adored. Humans, lizards, elves and dwarves all rallied to his banner. A great allegiance stood once more, but war raged on. With the aid of the Demon Divine and his vast demonic armies, the God King was pushed back into the very depths of the Void. But he was never truly defeated. Still, the new Divine was hailed as the greatest hero Rivalon had ever seen. Alas, harmony was not to last. The Demon Divine desired ever more power. The Demon Wars began. Rivalon was ravaged. The Divine held his ground, if barely. Desperate, the people pray for the rise of a new god woken once more. As for me, my last hope of ever being freed of the God King's terrible tyranny faded when the God Woken claimed divinity. An eternity of pain and suffering is mine. I cling now to the dream that one day the veil will be sealed, that one day I can be freed, that one day a new God Woken will rise. Melody stands tall and proud, sunlight sparkling off her mask. From here, she looks almost angelic. Well, here we are again. You, me, and the ship I'd saved from ruin for your personal benefit. I'd say you owe me. Oh, I stay the obvious. Get an eyeful. I expect it's the last we'll see of each other for some time. You've unleashed a powerful evil on our realm, you know. There's no telling who'll survive it. There's evil you can trust, and there's evil you should do everything in your power to destroy. You obviously don't understand the difference. Never mind. What's done is done. I don't know where I went wrong with you, but... <laughs> it's too late now. You know, I had looked forward to something of a vacation. A bottle of something strong, a lover or 300. Now, it seems, I'll have to focus on preventing end times. And you'll pay for that. So, divinity is yours. Or does it... Tarquin looks like he's about to unleash a... But of course you are. Pauses. I haven't decided. It gives me almost as much pleasure to speak to you as it does to be whole again. I 
I will always be an ally to those that carry source, to those whose blood is of the heroes of old, and so, as always, I am at the ready. You look out to the endless beyond. The sun's light plays upon the waves, just as it always did. The sails flutter in the wind, just as they always will. And yet, something is different. You are different. And with a start, you realize where you must go next. You speak the command to the Lady Vengeance, and another chapter begins. War raged on. Arx remained the center of power as the races united behind the Divine. But it also became the focus of the demon's attacks. Arx would see many more long years of war. Vulnerable as it was to the machinations of the demons who infiltrated the houses, the ancient empire of lizards was soon brought to its knees. With Justinia dead, the Dwarven Kingdom descended into chaos. They did not join the Divine Alliance. When the demons came, the Dwarves were ill-prepared. Few survived. With Lucian gone, the Elves reluctantly joined the Divine Alliance. Their place in the War on the Void would entirely depend on the integrity of the new Divine. When they learned of the Divine's deal with a demon, they gathered together, opened a portal, and left Rivalon forever. To where, no one knows. But sometimes the trees whisper a name, Nemesis. The elves may have made a terrible mistake. One last Black Ring Priestess survived the Void War. When the demons came, she fled into the wilderness. And there, after 39 days and 39 nights, she saw a man calling her name from another plane. His name, Damien. Young Han grew up a warrior and became one of the Alliance's greatest generals. But even he could not win the war. Almira and Mihaili settled in an abandoned homestead. The locals liked and respected Almira. She never wanted for help, and deals always fell to her favor. Outsiders were often suspicious, but no local would speak against her. With a new divine at the helm, Malady had a powerful ally. Until the war with the demons began, then, Malady the Half-Demon fell under suspicion from both sides. Having performed the greatest act of necromancy ever witnessed, Tarquin found the new Rivalon unchallenging. He became obsessed with the supposed new world on another plane of existence. One day, he vanished and was never seen in Rivalon again. Ahu the Wizard served the new divine with honor, wisdom, and an at times unnerving feline elegance. Jahan the Demon Hunter found the Demon Wars deeply worrying and also terribly good fun. Sahela herself led the elves out of Rivalon. The time had come for her people to set down their roots elsewhere. Tova, her mother, was Sahela's most trusted warrior. And then there was you. You, Ifan Ben Mezd, the Silver Claw, the Redeemed Divine. What did you do with your power? What kind of divine were you as the world battled on? Did you show mercy or strength? Did you sacrifice others as Lucian had done? 
Did you regret becoming divine? Did you wish you'd surrendered the power that runs through your veins and sealed the veil? Did you regret your deal with the demon divine? Or was the price of power just something that had to be paid? Only you know the truth. Only you know if you atone for your sins. <laughs>